Hi, I'm Tom Kinnair. I'm a head metrologist at a company called East Coast Metrology. The short version of what we do is we go places, we measure things. We're a small consulting company, primarily concerned with dimensional metrology, measuring length, width, height, and associated things like volume or area that you can derive from, from length measurement. We measure things on all scales from parts that uh, you might have to use a magnifying glass to see, all the way up to things as large as airplanes or boats or ships. So our company's widely diversified and a lot of interests, a lot of things, but it's all about dimensional measurement. I had no idea that I wanted to do this as a career. I kind of fell into it, went to school, got my mechanical engineering degree, I ran off and got a job with Rockwell International, uh, designing air, you know, des working on airplane designs. A little bit of this, a little bit of that, did some boat building, some um, tool and die uh, design and build work. And I just kind of fell into it. I was a customer of, uh, of East Coast before I, before I worked there. I worked with the founder, Gary Confalone, on a couple different projects while I was designing and building tooling. We were, uh, it was actually on the, uh, the Joint Airstrike Missile was the project we met on. And Gary, Gary came in, he was doing the measurements for us. When I got laid off there with a downturn in the economy, Gary said, I like you, you're a sharp guy, come work for me. Been there ever since, 16 years. Started off just, you know, hauling trackers around and doing measurements myself. Now I spend uh, more time with quoting, a lot of, a lot of teaching. Uh, we're trying to really expand our, our training capabilities at the company. Uh, occasionally I still have to go measure things, but uh, I do a lot of different stuff now. You know, I just, I just mentioned tracker. As a shorthand, um, I apologize because I use them every day. What I was talking about was laser trackers. It's a 3D measurement device, really cool. The device is set up and I carry a little steel sphere around. There's, there's three mirrors inside that sphere that the, reflect the laser beam back to the, back to the tracker. And it follows me everywhere. It measures a horizontal and a vertical angle and then it measure, measures range to determine exactly exactly where the center of that steel ball is at any time. And that's the one of the primary tools we use for doing our large scale measurements on things like airplanes. For someone getting into the field, there's a, a wide range of, of you know experiences or qualifications that you might have because the field's so broad. You know, something like a, a degree in engineering would be a huge help just because, not because you need a degree in engineering, but because it teaches you a way to think. Right? If you're really good in trigonometry, this would be a huge help. I mean, you don't have to be a super genius, but you have to be fluent in, in, in uh, trigonometry or geometry. It'd be a big help. But, you know, there's in dimensional metrology, there is a huge place for people who are just good hands on. You have, you have a modicum of common sense, a little common sense, good with your hands, able to interact with the computer if you're doing, doing the, the kind of work that I and my company do and you're in a lot of a lot of dimensional metrologists who are supporting say factory work they're good with their hands you can use calipers mics understand a little bit about temperature and how temperature affects materials you know these these kinds of these kinds of things can take you a long way in the field you know right now i'm responsible for doing some quoting getting getting information from customers and deciding how long and what the equipment work, how long it will take and what kind of equipment we're gonna to need to do a job and hence how much we need to charge the customer. As I said a little earlier, another thing I'm doing is developing training materials all the time. We're always trying to improve, improve our training courses because teaching is hard. Teaching is very difficult and uh, it's something that every time you do a class, you think, you know, I could have done this better and you can usually you know, figure out what, what that is, what, what the improvement should be. You know, for more of a, an entry-level person at, at our company, a day in the life is you'll travel. You will go to Cincinnati. You will stay in the hotel room. You'll get up the next morning. You'll go to the customer site. You'll set up the equipment. You'll do a series of measurements. You could be there. You could be there for four hours. You could be there for 14 days doing, doing the measurements that are required on site using a variety of equipment. We use laser trackers, we use articulated arm CMMs, we use a lot of hand, occasionally we use hand tools in the work too. It'd be easier or more efficient to take a measurement with something like a pair of calipers rather than to use a tracker or 
we call it an arm instead of articulated arm CMM, we just say arm. You know, so there's, there's a large variety of things you can do. And then, and then after you collect the data, you have to analyze it, put it in a report format that's easily understandable by the customer. That usually, it usually involves taking pictures as we do the job or um, screen captures of the measurements as we're taking them to help explain what we're doing. So when the customer gets the data from us, he can figure out exactly what it is that we did and what we're trying to tell him. And if I was going to give anyone advice, not just about getting into into dimensional metrology, but getting into anything. It's, it's have a plan. Even if you're not 100% sure what you want to do, have a plan. You know, you can decide, I want to be a dimensional metrologist. And you can decide, okay, maybe, you know, maybe I'll, I'll take some math courses at the community college to help, help me get there. And along the way, maybe I'll, maybe I will, uh, you know, take a job as a machinist. Experience with machine, machine, uh, machining is, yeah, it's a great background to have if you're going to get into dimensional metrology. It really is. But along the way, you may find out that is not what you really want to do, or you may find out you really like it, or maybe you really like some particular aspect of it, and then you might change course slightly. But if you have a plan, at least you're going to be moving forward, right? And then if you see that opportunity, you can always change course. Wait, how can you get more information? How can you find out more about uh, dimensional metrology? Couple, couple ways. One is uh, you can go to my company's website, www.eastcoastmetrology.com, and just browse through the site, see what you find there. You can go to the manufacturer's sites, the manufacturers of the equipment we use. So companies like Ferro or Hexagon Metrology, or maybe some of the software companies whose software we use, like uh, New River Kinematics. And you can go to their websites and just look through there and see if anything catches your eye. A really great website is the uh, NPL website, www.npl.co.uk. NPL is the National Physical Laboratory. It is kind of like the NIST of Great Britain, which means that it is the entity in Britain that decides, okay, a meter is a meter. They do experiments every year or two. And everybody, everybody in England who is measuring length has to come back and eventually compare their instruments to the NPL standards. Just like in here in the U.S., uh, we get all our all our our instruments calibrated, and they're traceable back to back to NIST. There's a there's a line of comparisons that goes all the way back to list NIST, so that we know, you know, our equipment is good and accurate. And if we say it's a meter, and someone else says something's a meter long, they'll both be you know reasonably close.